Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. I've got another wire wrapped jewelry tutorial for you. I hope you all are enjoying your summer and staying as cool as possible. Where my husband and I are living now, we've been having some pretty crazy temperatures. It's been, oh, getting up to almost 120 here uh, the past few weeks, so I haven't really felt up to doing tutorials until now. But we're enjoying a nice cool spell. It's only been getting up to about 105 now, so. I am back. I wanted to do something a little bit summery, a little bit beach inspired here with a sea glass nugget uh, pendant or earrings. So what I've done here is just created a design that kind of encases some little sea glass chunks which I collected a few years back. Um, I think in the Outer Banks is where I got these. Of course you don't have to use sea glass, you can use any little irregular shaped beads that you like. Um, if you search for something like nugget or chip beads and then undrilled. That's going to be pretty much a similar thing for you. I will leave a link in the description section below. I did find a shop on Etsy that sells some cultured sea glass chips, which should be pretty similar to these. Mine are kind of a range anywhere from, I don't know, uh, 5 millimeters up to the largest is 10 millimeters. So that kind of range for size is what you're going to want. I do like the variegated pattern. Um, as far as wire goes for what you're going to be making here, we'll need three types. I'll be using some 18 gauge round wire, some 22 gauge round wire, and also some 28 gauge round wire to connect everything together. The 22 and 28 gauge I do recommend getting dead soft. The 18 gauge could be uh, half hard as well, would work well. So first things first, I'm going to take my 18 gauge wire and we're going to create the kind of teardrop shaped frame for this design. So I'm doing five and a half inches of that 18 gauge wire. For those of you in metric, that's just about 14 centimeters. So we'll just get that cut there. And you can put your 18 gauge wire away now. That's all that we were going to do with that was just the frame. And I'm just going to start shaping my little teardrop that I want here. And you don't have to make it a long skinny teardrop like I did. You can really do any shape you like. It will just affect the little um, swirly bits at the bottom. It will affect how those fit inside of it. But this is very customizable. Um, but for my purposes, I'm just going to start by shaping kind of a tall skinny teardrop here. And as you can see, I'm using my fingers as much as I can just to avoid any tool marks in the wire. Um, if you're using half hard, you will probably not be able to shape it with just your fingers though. Alright, and I'm really just shaping this until I reach a shape and a size that I'm happy with, that I find visually pleasing. Um, if you're trying to follow on along exactly, let me just give you the measurements of this. Um, so mine at the widest point is just about three quarters of an inch wide. And then for height, we're looking at just about one and a half inches high. Okay, so that's what mine is. Once you're happy with the shape, we're gonna use these two little tails to create a wrapped loop at the top. So right where they cross over each other, I'm going to bend one off horizontally. And then the other one, again, right where they cross, I'm gonna take up vertically so that these two wires create a 90 degree angle. Then I'm going to wrap the horizontal one around the vertical one. Once you have enough wraps that you're happy, we can use our flush cutters to snip that off. I'm going to pull out my maxi, sh maxi shear Zurons here because this wire is a little bit on the thick side for my micro shear ones. And then you can push that end down so that it's flush and won't be catching on anything. Alright, we're just going to use this little vertical piece then to create a little loop that we can then hang our bail or your wires off of. Alright, so just wrapping that around with my round nose pliers and then snipping it with my flush cutters and you can twist it closed just there like that. Alright, so that's our basic frame shape real quick whipped up. What we're going to do now is start creating the little swirly overlays that we will use to encase our little sea glass nuggets. Alright, so for that I have pulled out our 22 gauge wire and we're going to cut some lengths of this. I'm going to cut two pieces that are 4 inches long. And if you're sizing up or down um, your teardrop significantly from what I did, you will of course want to 
uh, increase or decrease these lengths accordingly. Um, so four inches in metric is about a little under ten and a half centimeters. So I'm going to cut two pieces of that, the four inch length, and then we will also cut two pieces which are two and a half inches long. Um, so two and a half again in metric is going to be about six and a half centimeters. So we'll cut two pieces of that. And then we can set aside our 22 gauge wire. We're done with him. And I'm just going to make sure all my ends are flush using my flush cutters here. Just to double check there aren't any pointy ends sticking out. So I'll do that on all four of my wire pieces. And I'm going to start with one of these longer pieces. What we're going to do is start shaping this bottom swirly bit right here, the longer one that you can see is one piece of wire. So to do that I'm going to start roughly in the center of our wire. I'm going to bend it over on itself to create kind of a little teardrop shape at the bottom. And you might find your round nose pliers to be helpful here. So I'm just going to take those two ends over each other to create a little teardrop shape. And then on either side I'm going to loop those tails down to create almost an M shape. Just like that. And then kind of on the side of the teardrops I'm going to grip with my round nose pliers and start putting a little loop in going off to either side. A little loopy loop. I'm going to continue wrapping this around in a circle. So we've created a little circle there and then I'm going to go and grip on the upper inside with my round nose pliers so that I can create a smaller little circle inside of that one. So that we've just kind of swooped it around like that. I'm going to bring the tail back towards the center line. So we've got something like that. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and I will continue shaping these little pieces here. And it doesn't hurt, I forgot to mention, you can actually make this ever so slightly larger than your frame uh, because we're going to be putting a slight kind of arch or bend in this so that our little overlays can bow out and allow there to be some room for that sea glass inside. So you can have this extend ever so slightly past the boundaries of your uh, frame. That does work as well. Um, and if you have thicker pieces of um, nugget beads or sea glass, you'll want to kind of exaggerate that even more so that you can put even more of a, um, I guess, a concave <laughs> shape onto your little swirly decorative overlay pieces. All right, and what we're going to do with these last two tails is just put some little open spirals in. So I'm going to take the right hand tail and spiral it to the right, and the left hand tail and spiral it to the left. So let's grab this one here, and I'm going to be spiraling this towards the outside of our shape. Just putting a little open spiral in right on the tip of that wire, and then continuing it on around so that we get something like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So that's the kind of general shape we have now. I'm going to lay this over our teardrop once again and just see what we're working with here. So it is extending past the margin slightly, which is okay. What I'm going to do at this point is start putting our little bend in. So instead of it being flat here like you can see, I'm just going to start bending it slightly. Um, again, this will allow space for our little sea glass pieces lie inside of it. So I'm just starting to put a slight bend in it there. And that will help it to fit properly to our frame as well. So we want to make sure we have that little bend taken into account before we connect things to our frame. So 
let me see how we're doing now. Just holding it over top of our frame, double checking all those connection points that we want to have. Um, so it looks like I need to bring this little spiral up slightly. And same thing on this side. Just bringing that up ever so slightly. So that we're going to have something like that. And if I can show you from the side here, um, you can see that it is, if it'll focus, you can see that it's slightly domed up. Alright, so let's go ahead and shape the little piece that's going to sit on top of this one. Um, you can see we just made this lower piece right here. So we're going to do a smaller one that's now going to be asymmetrical and is going to fit in this little space right on top right there. So pull out your shorter piece of wire, one of your shorter pieces of wire, uh, the two and a half inch piece. Um, with this one we're going to start by putting a little open spiral on the end of it. So a nice small little open spiral, just wrapping it around here. And this little open spiral is going to sit, if we pull out our other piece again that we shaped earlier, this little spiral is going to sit right there like that. And then we're going to add a little teardrop loop right here on this side to sit in this space. So let me go ahead and do that, just gripping right there with my round nose pliers. And we're going to wrap this wire all the way around to create a little teardrop shape right there like that. And I'm going to double check as I go that it's fitting inside of our piece here. And then we're going to bring this tail to create another little open spiral on top on this space right here. Okay, so let me wrap that around a little bit further. And you do want these two points here to be connecting the side of our open spiral and the side of our little loop. You want those to be touching each other. And then as this sits inside of this piece here, you want the bottom line of this whole swoop to be connecting with the top line of everything we shaped earlier. And then I'm just going to take the top tail here and create another open spiral going towards the outside of our design. It's looking like I may not actually need all this length. I might wind up um, snipping some of this off. Because what we want for this one is for it to sit directly on top this little open spiral. And I don't want it to be so much bigger than he is, so I'm just going to snip a little bit off here that we don't need all of that wire length. And then I will close this little spiral back up a bit. Alright, so those are our two pieces and that's how they fit together there as you can see. What we're going to do now is start connecting these together. So go ahead and pull out your 28 gauge wire. And we're just going to cut some little lengths of this to start doing little connecting pieces. Um, so pretty short lengths. Um, you don't even need an inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch or um, maybe a little longer than that even. Two and a half centimeters should be perfect. And I'm just going to cut a bunch of those little pieces. Um, I believe we need to connect these two together. We need six of these. So let me go ahead and cut six little pieces. And then to save time, I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers and put a little U-shaped bend in the center of all of these at once. I'm going to set those all aside and just work with one at a time. Let's go ahead and do our first uh, connection for these two pieces. So it doesn't really matter which spot you do first, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to wrap first this top of our initial teardrop and the wire right there. So I'm going to take one of these little U-shaped pieces and I'm going to drop it over both of those wires 
right there like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to wrap these tails around and put probably about four wraps or so in just to connect everything together nicely. There we go. Uh, once you have enough wraps in, you can go to the back, snip off the ends pretty close to your design, and then just push those down with your chain nose pliers so there aren't any loose pokey ends. All right, and we're going to continue doing that at all our connection points. So I'm going to put another one in up here. If I can get one of my little wires. I'm going to put another one in right here. Again, same deal as before, just crossing these over each other and using the tails to wrap about four times around. And it is pretty tricky working with this really fine wire. So just take your time. If you have one of those little magnifying glass light things, those really come in handy here. Um, although I don't have one yet, I just make do with my mostly okay so far eyesight. <laughs> There we go, as before, switching to the back, we'll just snip off the excess ends that we don't need. And we'll push those down against our design. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing that with all of our connector points. Um, there's gonna be one right here, connecting these two. There's gonna be one here, and we're going to have one up here with these two spirals. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of those and then come back. All right, so I got all my connector points in there. And what we wanna do now is go ahead and make a second piece just like this, except mirror image, which I have already done actually. Um, so as you can see here, just a second one, only mirror imaged. So that what we can then do with these is kind of sandwich them together uh, back to back with a little puffed out space in between them, just like that, and they're going to go on either side of our frame. All right, so go ahead and go do that if you need a few minutes to do that, and we will press on ahead and start connecting these to our frame. To do that, I'm going to be using, once again, our 28 gauge wire. Uh, I'm just going to cut a fairly long piece of this. I never really measure it exactly, but I will tell you uh, how much I'm doing just so you can follow along. Um, so let's go ahead and start with maybe a 10 inch piece or so. Um, and we can splice in more of this if we need to later, so don't really, don't worry too much about the length of that. I'm just gonna bend this kind of roughly in half. And then this is the sort of tricky part is getting this all started with all of our pieces. So I'm gonna take one of these pieces and place it on the front and we're just going to line it up on the frame like that. And then the other piece is going to go on the back uh, identically so that all the connecting points meet up with it. Okay, so I'm just kind of loosely holding everything in place here with my left hand. And then I'm going to start placing our initial wraps using my right hand. What I'm gonna do first is connect these bottom points together where we have our two little teardrops hitting the bottom of our frame. And I'm just gonna take that long U-shaped piece of our 28 gauge wire and I'm gonna feed it through so that it goes around all three of those wires that we're trying to connect. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to start crossing these tails over And I am trying to keep it so that our pieces are on either side of our frame instead of falling into the center or something like that. And this is gonna be a little rough until we get our first few binds in, so don't worry about that too much. The main thing is to just start getting these connections in place 
and then we can tweak things a little bit later as needed. So I'm just going to start feeding this wire around, pulling that first little connection tight there, and then we will place a few more wraps in the same manner. All right, now that I've got like two wraps or so in here, I'm start gonna be I'm gonna start to be a little more finicky with placement. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got my two little uh, teardrop shapes lined up here with each other, and then we will place a few more wraps. All right, and once I've got about five or six wraps here at that bottom point connecting everything together, I'm going to take my 28 gauge wire tail and just wrap it around the frame wire uh, on the right hand side. And I'm just going to spiral it around there a few times so that we can travel over to our next um, connecting point. So I'm just kind of putting a loose little loose little spirals around there just traveling over to our next connecting point which is going to be where this little swirly bit connects the frame and the same same thing on the other side and it is getting a little bit easier to hold things together but you do, do still want to stabilize with your left hand as needed while you wrap everything together so I'm just going to bring this uh, 28 gauge wire around all of that now. And then we will put additional wraps in there just like we did with our previous spot. All right, and now I've got five or six good wraps there on that point. I'm going to switch over to our other longer tail over here and we're going to do the same thing, um, continuing off to the other side, just wrapping it around our frame wire only um, and kind of spiraling it over so we can travel over to our next wrapping point that we need to do. Um, so I'm going to put two, two kind of travel wraps in there and then I'm going to feed it through that same space that we did on the other side and we will start wrapping uh, to connect these little swirls now. Alright, once again we're going to spiral around just the frame wire to travel up to our next connecting point. So let me start doing that. And this time I think I will go around the frame wire three times to reach our next spot. There we go. And now we're going to connect just around these little open spirals here on both sides. Those ones are a bit smaller so I'm only going to put three wraps in. And then finally we have reached our uppermost little spirals. They are kind of going past the frame a little bit um, so it turns out I made them a little too big. I'm just going to fix that by gently closing them up slightly. Um, and I will need to do that on both the front and the back. Okay, so that looks better. I'm just going to take this weaving wire once around our frame, if I can fit it through that space. And it's not really wanting me to be able to feed it through there, so I'm just going to go straight to wrapping around both of these little uh, uppermost spirals. That'll work just fine. And we'll just wrap it around them until we, basically until we use up our wire here, because I'm a little, <laughs> a little short on wire. Um, I'm hoping we can get about four or five wraps out of it though. Alright, and last wrap, and then we will cut this wire tail uh, on the inside to hide it. Alright, so I'm just going to snip it right there. There we go. And we'll push the end down to secure it. And that is one side done. I'm just going to flip over to continue with our last little tail here. And it's looking like I may not have enough. I might need to splice on a little bit more wire. Um, so that's not a problem. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of. 
So I think I'm at a good stopping point here for this wire. I'm just going to um, hide it on the inside um, like I did earlier on that other piece. So I'm going to snip off here with enough length that I can tuck it into the uh, inside of our little cage here to hide that tail. And then I will cut an additional piece of 28 gauge wire which we can use to finish wrapping that. I'm going to leave enough tail on this additional piece to do the little zigzaggy bit on top which will secure all of our stones inside the cage. So I'm going to cut a, another fairly long piece of this. Um, let's see if another, another 10 inch piece will do it for us hopefully. Maybe a little more, I'll do 11. And then just taking a little bit of a short end to hang on to, I'm going to feed it around this uh, frame wire only. And then I will wrap the longer end around the frame wire a few times to travel up to our next binding point, just like we've been doing before. Alright, and then using this long tail we're going to connect our last to uh, spirals right here. So then we have something like that now. So as you can see we've got a little open cage with a space in the top. We've got our spare wire tail that we're just going to let hang out there for now. And I am going to just finish off this little tail down here by snipping it close and then hiding the end in that little space there, kind of pushing it down a little bit. There we go. And now what we can do is start placing our little sea glass chunks or whatever little nugget beads you're using inside of our cage. So let me pull out my little sea glass pieces here. And you do want to be careful to not use pieces that are small enough to slip through uh, any of our gaps where they're going to be placed. So I'm going to start by placing some smaller pieces in the bottom where I know the spaces are uh, closer together so it's less likely that things can <laughs> kind of fall out down there. I'm just going to kind of roughly alternate um, my clear ones and my green ones that I have. Just kind of dropping them in to create a pleasing little pattern there. I'm going to start using larger pieces towards the top because I do have some larger uh, spaces between my wires up near the top. And I want to make sure that nothing's going to fall out. So I'm just kind of laying them in there until I get a pattern that I think is pleasing looking. If you don't want to overfill it, we do want to have room to zigzag our uh, little wire across the top to hold everything in. So I think I'm pretty happy with just those pieces that I've put in. Let me save the rest of those for later. So now I want to be careful not to tip this over and let everything fall out. So I'm going to start securing everything in place at this point. So I'm going to take this long tail that we have here. I'm going to feed it through the back. And then I'm just going to kind of view this uh, from the top if we can here. And let me flip this around so I can work from left to right. That's easier for me because I'm right-handed. I'm just going to start weaving this wire back and forth going through these upper points uh, on our little design just to kind of create a little zigzag netting uh, which will hold our stones in place. Alright, so I'm going to weave it through this swirl here now. I'm just going to kind of zigzag back and forth, uh, pulling it tightly each time. And that is going to go over top of our stones and create kind of a little basket that holds them in place. Okay, so just going back and forth here. I'm going to go through this spiral now. Let me switch sides so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going through that spiral now. So we've now encased that little green stone there. He's not going to be able to go anywhere. And 
we're just going to continue that going back and forth, back and forth, until all of our stones are secured. And now for this final bit, we have encased all of our stones at this point. As you can see here, that little space through the top is much too small for any of our stones to go through. I'm just going to finish off this weaving wire by wrapping it a few times around uh, just one of these little, little swirls. So I'm just going to finish it off by wrapping it a couple times here nice and tightly around there so that there's nowhere it can uh, easily unravel. So I'm going to do like four nice tight wraps there. There we go. And then, just like always, I'm going to snip off so the wire can be hidden on the inside of our design. And just tighten that down with my chain nose pliers. Alright, so that is our design pretty much done here. Um, I'm just going to double check that everything feels secure and nothing's going to, you know, fall out or jiggle out of place how I don't want it. I'm doing a final check to make sure that everything is shaped how I want it to for any final tweaking. Now at this point you can go ahead and do a second one uh, just like this to turn it into a pair of earrings. To turn it into earrings, of course, you would very simply take your favorite kind of ear wire. And I do have many tutorials on my YouTube channel if you like to make your own. Uh, I have lots of tutorials on different styles. Anything from French hooks to kidney wires, I've got uh, lots of tutorials on there. But I'm just going to be using this little French hook with a little ball on it. I like this style. I think it's quite pretty. You would just open it up, slide it through that loop on top, and close him on up. Again, if you made a second one, that's how you would do a pair of earrings. Um, I do like these as earrings. I think it's very pretty hanging because it kind of shows off that negative space and also lets the light shine through our little sea glass beads here. So I do very much like these for earrings. If you wanted to turn it into a pendant like I did with this copper one, you would very simply add a bail on top through that exact same loop. I have done a tutorial on my channel on how I made this little handcrafted wire wrapped bale. If you want to see that, you can either visit my channel or I will include it as a little pop up here. There should be a lowercase i icon in the upper right hand corner of your screen that you can click to go see that tutorial if you're interested. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow and that it sparks your creativity. Of course there's lots of different things you can do with this general style. You don't have to follow the exact little swirls and loops I did. Um, I did do one here where I filled in the whole thing with swirls. I eventually decided this was a little bit too fussy for me and I didn't like it <laughs> quite as much. And then on the back I just did kind of a, a little netting to hold it in instead of doing identical swirls on the back, but as you can see, lots of different variations on this. If you enjoyed this, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing for future videos. I do have many more planned. You can also comment below if you had any questions along the way, or if you had ideas for future tutorials you might like to see. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys are doing well, and I will see you in the next video. Happy crafting!